Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. Everything of peace. Alhamdulillah rabbil alamin wassalatu wassalamu syafil anbiya mursalin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajmain. I am indeed very honored to be able to see you again and share some of my thoughts of what has been happening in the last one year and how we are going to tackle the new year of 2021 and beyond. I also would like to mention that we have lost a giant in the academic world by the name of Royal Professor Nku Aziz Abdul Hamid who is all known to us as Pak Nku in very much the way that we look at him not only as an intellectual giant but also as a father figure in education particularly higher education in Malaysia Pak Nku left us on December 15 and with him a number of legacies that was left behind for us to ponder and think about i would like on behalf of the university express the deepest condolences to his family and also to all Malaysians that we have now lost a giant in our midst but it is not all lost for us i think we need to be reminded that pak enku remains as the icon that we all must look up to and also try to make our university the best that we could the way they has tried for the last 20 years as a vice chancellor in the university of malaya from the year 1968 to 1998 so with that i would want us to give uh, a minute of silence and read al fatiha on behalf of pak enku Brothers and sisters, let me come back to where we were in the context of trying to understand what has been happening in the last one year, in the year 2020. 2020 is supposed to be an auspicious occasion for Malaysia in the context of Wawasan 2020 that was started in 1991 for the next three decades. All of us were geared to the idea of putting Malaysia on the map. as a developed country in its own mold to make Malaysia known to the world at large given the challenges that was posed to us under the Wawasan 2020 framework these nine challenges covers a whole lot of range starting from a nation that is united ending up to a nation that is caring and also dynamic in terms of its running in a, in a democratic way This has been the vision that all of us had been aspiring to but unfortunately because of some circumstances this vision is now postponed to the year 2025 because of some dislocation not only in the running of the university but also in an, in the understanding of this vision 2020 so we are left with a kind of a disappointment at least i am disappointed that vision which is 20 will not be visited the way we want it to be as framed up by vision 2020 challenges and so on now as far as the university is concerned despite that we are still very optimistic and hence we want to make 2020 as a kind of a memorable year for our own university the way we're going to conduct our business and making achievements as far as we are concerned We have coined up what we call celebrating 2020, with the idea that we're going to work very hard to make sure that there are landmarks and there are milestones in the year 2020 that will remind us of what this year has to be for the university, if not for the nation as a whole. On that note, I think we are prepared and geared up to work out what the roadmap of the university will be as it ends in the year 2020. I think all of us has worked hard in trying to make changes that is possible within that two years. Now, little did we know, by the time we arrive in this in March 18, the COVID-19 pandemic has become one of the other dislocation that all of us are not expecting of. 
and therefore the roadmap that we did need to be readjusted very quickly so that whatever mission that we stay for ourselves still remain true but we need to work a little bit harder. But Alhamdulillah, COVID-19 is not all lost. From my point of view, COVID-19 teaches us a number of lessons that we have been thinking about under the roadmap 2019-2020. Let me list at least three of them. One is COVID-19, whether we like it or not, has forced us to think of what we are supposed to do together, not as individuals, not as departments, not as Kulia, but together as a community of IIUM. Indeed, this is what the roadmap is when we started to break down the silos to make sure that we are working together, although it is difficult at the moment in time, but COVID-19 remind us either we do this or we will perish together. And hence, COVID-19 becomes another impetus for us to think where we are and how we're going to carry uh, forward the missions that we have set for ourselves. And Alhamdulillah, this has been proven that we are quite capable of working together in trying to handle pandemics like COVID-19. Many examples could be given, but suffice to say that all of us have been working together in keeping the university as clean, as green, and as healthy as possible, not only in Bomba, but all the other campuses in Kuantan, Gambang, and Pago. This, I think, is the first indication that this university is able to change, that this university is able to work together, and this university is able to craft its own future if only we can forget the differences among ourselves and work together as a community, as an ummah, the way we have quoted it most of the time in making this university what it is today. The second thing, I think the COVID-19 also tells us it's just not about our university, but we also need to extend our concern to the community beyond the university. In other words, the community around us is suffering just as much as the university. In fact, they are doing even worse because they do not have a kind of a safety net that the university has got. The university is fortunate enough to have support from not only within, but also without. Many people, including the government, are very sensitive to the uh, state of affairs in the university, particularly when there's a lockdown and many people has given their uh, donations and also uh, whatever other help that they could extend to make the students' life better and also, as far as the university is concerned, to make sure that all of us are in safe hands with the COVID-19 raging around us. And this community engagement is something, again, that the university has been talking about in the year 2019 as we moved our roadmap forward. And therefore, community engagement now becomes part and parcel of how the university wants to carry its business, not only among students, but also among staff and the university as a whole. Indeed, I think we have done our fair share in trying to uh, mediate or mitigate some of the issues that have been faced by the community around us as far as, 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 far as we can go. Indeed, one of the things that we have done quite tremendously was to create the PPE in the thousands. These are basically done by students and also the staff together and we have been distributing this to many uh, institutions or outlets that needs this so that they can use it as a defense for them to work with the uh, victims or the patient that is infested with COVID-19. So community engagement now become another milestone that we need to look at as far as moving this disease forward under the circumstances given the COVID-19 pandemic. And last but not least, the lesson that we learned, or at least I think we learned, is about volunteerism. Many people uh, work together without asking what will be the return for them. There's no two credits that we're talking about. There's no uh, rewards per se. Everybody went to the ground to work together because they felt it is part and parcel of the commitment as the university to work and to make sure 
that everything is taken care as best as we could on the basis of their own niat or their compassion towards people around them. This is another value that the university wants to bring about to show that we are committed to the community given our position as a person who is quote-unquote educated in the discipline that we've got that needs to be shared with them on the basis of voluntarism. And voluntarism, including wakaf time, is something now is going to be embedded in the university as part and parcel of how we contribute to the university moving forward. There are many other lessons, I'm sure, on individual basis, how we're going to tackle this. But these three pillars, I think, is enough to tell us that this university is capable in moving forward, making things happen the moment we set ourselves to a goal, working together, leaving behind the differences and indeed creating a platform so that we can uh, use each other's uh, expertise and also ideas to make things work. And hence, I would like to say that whatever we've done together, in the name of uh, the Roadmap 2019-2020, we are beginning to reap some successes, not only recognised within our ambits, but also recognised by the world. This is not an important uh, achievement as such, but it is an indication that we are doing things on the right track, that people are observing us, then we are also capable of showing that we have got the capacity to make things happen, to make changes where it is due. And on that note, I think there are three things that I think I want to share with you that we could be proud of. First, when we are recognised by the United Nations University as the regional centres of expertise on education for sustainable development, being, I think, the first post-COVID centre, as it were, and number 175 around the world, that recognises as a responsible university that invested time and ideas on how to make the world around us sustainable. It becomes even more important for me because the mission of the university, notably mission number two, talks about this university being an agent of change in a comprehensive and a balanced manner towards sustainable development goal. And therefore, sustainable development is not a new thing for this university. It has been there for the last 25 years, crafted in 1995 by Professor uh, Kamal Hassan. And this mission now is accomplished in the year 2020 as part and parcel of the university's idea to move forward together with the global agenda around us. It is not just sustainable development goal as it is given by UNESCO or United Nations. It is sustainable development in our terms when we add in Islamic principles like Makasir Asharia and also Rahmatan Lil Alamin, which elevates this understanding of sustainable development goal to a higher goal that involves everybody around the world, not just the planet, but everybody in the universe as it were. I think this is an achievement that all of us can be proud of. The question now, how do we push this forward to make it even more relevant to us and the world around us? And I think that will be the mission that we will look into in the year 2021. The second achievement, if I were to say so, is when we were recognised by, again, uh, an, an international agency, United Nations uh, Environment, together with many other international organisations that works on higher education to name us as a Sustainable Institution of the Year for the year 2020. This is something again that comes quite unexpectedly. When we work through some of the works that we do, we thought it is time to test and find out where we were in the scheme of things internationally. And Alhamdulillah, in that particular occasion, we were announced to be the Sustainability Institution of the Year on the 8th of July, I think it's a year, that I, a year and a date that I will remember, uh, in New York, in occasion of the United Nations High-Level Meeting on Sustainable Development. We are listed as uh, one of the 10 finalists, and Alhamdulillah, at the end of the day, 
we became quote unquote the winner beating most of the other uh, institution that has been together with us in trying to build up sustainable development. Again, this is a goal that I think we need to reflect on. In other words, this university is able and capable of leading the way in the areas that we want to, if we work close enough together, given the three, uh, the three lessons that we learned from COVID. In other words, remove all the silos, working together, engage ourselves with the community around us, including our own in internal community, and also work throughout on a voluntary basis, donating our time, donating our effort, and also ideas in making what sh it should be as far as university is concerned. And last but not least, and I think we are still uh, into this, and when the university now is going to be recognised by, again, UNESCO, as a UNESCO Chair for Future Studies. This UNESCO Chair is perhaps the few in the country that talks about what we can do in trying to understand where the future leads us. Some of us are sceptical when you talk about the future. We are not sure, particularly when there are a lot of uncertainties in the context of COVID-19. But this uh, Chair will allow us to understand this quite methodologically and also to understand it from the academic and intellectual point of view as to where we should direct ourselves. This may not be the final uh, decision. We still need to collectively talk about it in the year 2021 as to how we want to mold this university for the future given all the issues that is surrounding us today and in fact beyond. So these are the three major things that I think we can uh, take cognition of that if we work hard together and we put our minds together, we can move somewhere where we have not been before. And for the year 2021, there are many other things that we can do based on the platform that we have created on the year 2021 to jumpstart many of the things that we are now planning under the roadmap 21-22. And even beyond that, in the year 2023, where this university will celebrate its 40th anniversary and this will be an occasion for us again uh, to, to celebrate and to make sure that the university is where it should be 40 years from its own uh, existence and since 1983. So brothers and sisters, um, there are many things that we can talk about. On this occasion, I would just want to remind us that we are in a journey and that journey has taken a lot of momentum in the last two years. We need to keep this momentum. We need to keep the cohesiveness. We need to keep the understanding and the platform that we have created. And in fact, we need to build it even further so that many other things that you are dreaming of could be realized in the year 21 and the year 22 and beyond. I would like to uh, take this opportunity to thank you for all that you have done, I think this cannot be done by one or two person or a group of person. It has to be all of us coming together, although we have some difficulties in trying to understand, but it is only natural. When we introduce change, there will be people who are sceptical for change, there will be people who are resistant for change, but the majority of us who are for change, I think needs to work through to make sure that we are all on board to make sure that any differences could be ironed out. There's no differences, I think, that could not be ironed out if we open our minds and hearts together. After all, it is for the better of the university, it is for the best of the Ummah, and of course, it is for all of us to make sure that we do our amana in trying to fulfill the mission of the university moving forward on Rahmatan Lil Alameen. So on that note, I would like to uh, thank you once again and I look forward to working with you closely for the year 21, 22 and beyond. And I hope we can uh, come together in a more cohesive way uh, after this, when we start uh, looking at the uh, roadmap 2021 to 2022, and also taking other initiatives like the Sejahtera Academic Framework and other things that will come by as we move forward in trying to understand what the future will be like. 
So let uh, let us pray to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. We are given all the blessings and the courage uh, to step forward, to do what is right, and also to fulfill all the mission that we have set for ourselves in the context of Khalifa, Amana, Ikrak, and Rahmatan lil alamin, which underlines what this university is all about. So wabillahi taufiq wa hidayah. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. Happy New Year and Happy Year 2021 and beyond, insha Allah.